Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. In this video, we're going to be talking about Sony McCopy's new firmware update 2.1. And what I'm going to show you right now is probably my favorite addition to this firmware, and that's going to be able to reset your pose with using just the sensors on your wrist. Now, if you watch my live stream when the Sony McCopy first came out, I had to like reset my position using the iPhone, but now you can now reset both your pose and position in the space using just the wrist button freaking awesome stuff so let's go ahead and do the left wrist button first what this is going to do is let you reset your pose so i'll press that once and go to my a pose standing pose neutral pose whatever you want to call it and then that's it i just resetted my pose everything is good now resetting your pose is absolutely useful especially when you're live streaming for like hours at a time and something's starting to drift or fall off just reset it with the left wrist button and you're good to go all right so i moved just a little bit forward to kind of show you what this one right here will do the reset the position so now i'm going to press and hold it and then let it go and what that's going to do is actually bring me back to where I was originally. Now that is very, very helpful because if you have a small space, like I said, and let's say you wanted to move somewhere where you're showcasing something and you want that to be your center, you can easily just reset it using the right wrist button instead of having to go to the phone and resetting it that way. So now that I went ahead and demonstrated what the new left and right wrist buttons do, let me go ahead and talk about some more stuff that they added with this new firmware 2.1. All right, so here's the list of features coming in 2.1.0. One of the things that I did notice with using this app was the sensors are actually connecting a lot faster than before. Additionally, I went ahead and demonstrated the reset pose and position by pressing the wrist buttons. You can change the backgrounds during motion preview now. Apparently some people were requesting that, so they gave that to them. And now you can import motion BVH files recorded other than Sony McCopy. They also added some additional motion samples in the app. They also have a McCopy data analyzer now. If you want to see it in the graph, how the mocap is going, you can check that out. And additionally, they did add an integration support for the Sony McCopy in the Animes platform. If you're not familiar with that, it's pretty much a uh, video to facial animation. So now you can use the Sony McCopy with that. Check it out if you haven't done so, if you don't know what that is. Additionally, this right here is a big one. This is a big one. They are adding Sony McCopy Maya plugin. Now I have talked to a lot of people who has been asking me about this actually. The reason for that is that the Sony McCopy for the price, you can easily as an animator record your own reference motion captures. And let's be honest, Maya is still the standard right now. So this is huge for Maya users. You're gonna be able to use the $400 Sony McCopy motion capture inside Maya. That's crazy. And then lastly, they are gonna have a Sony McCopy PC app as well uh, whenever they release 2.1. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to give you all a quick update on what's coming up in the new firmware 2.1. That said, if you are a new Sony McCopy user, make sure to share your work with me. I had some people from the Unreal Engine for Fortnite getting into Sony McCopy now and they sent me their results and they're like freaking out because they're like, this is so cool. And I was like, yeah, dude, it's pretty insane on what you can do for that amount of money nowadays. But yeah. That's it. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.